Hi everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Twin Motion 2020.2 tutorial. Today I thought it'd be nice to look at the new rotators and animators in a little bit more detail. So we're going to take a look at the rotator object to begin with in this video. You can see I've basically imported a uh, model of a wind turbine from uh, SketchUp, from the SketchUp warehouse. And if you do search, uh, you'll find plenty of different kind of wind turbines on there. Basically, what we're going to do, we're going to go down to Tools and we're going to drag in from the animators a rotator object. Um, and these rotator objects basically can be placed more or less on the point you would like. Now I'm going to go into my SketchUp model and simply drag in the rotor assembly into that rotator object. Now you can see as soon as you drag it in, it does start to rotate round. And if you click onto uh, rotator axis, you can actually swap the axis. So by doing that, I can actually swap the axis and also now change the angle to 360. So it's going to rotate a full 360 degrees. And finally, just change the animation so it's on loop. That means it will just keep spinning rather than being on ping pong where it goes back and forward. Now, the good thing is you can turn the animation on and off because it's a little bit distracting when <laughs> working with it on. Um, so I've turned it off for a moment. And I'm just going to zoom in to this area and you can see the problem I've got at the moment is the rotator is slightly off center. So this is something you've got to be really quite careful with. Um, otherwise, the rotation is going to look a little bit odd. So basically, just kind of move the rotator onto the correct pivot point and then actually take the assembly and basically center it on that rotator as well. Uh, this is probably definitely the hardest thing um, about using the rotators, the animators, just getting them positioned correctly. Let's have a look at how that's looking. Looks a lot better. So I'm going to click back onto the rotator and turn play on. And you can see it's definitely better. Um, it's still not quite centered. So that's the one thing I would recommend you spend a little bit of time doing. Just kind of trying to kind of get that centered up. A nice tip here is sometimes to turn off the visibility of the actual element um, and then place the rotator centrally and then you can turn the visibility of the um, element like the rotator assembly back on for example in this example here. Um, so you can see we've got a pretty good job actually. So now what I'm going to do is put it all into one group just by dragging the order of the object. So it's all kind of composited into one element. And um, that's really great because then I can kind of move it around, duplicate it and so on. But what I'm actually going to do here is right click and add it to my user library. The whole thing including the rotator. So the whole windmill and the rotator itself. And I'm just going to quickly uh, change the settings on my, my computer here. Just gone for medium settings instead of high just to kind of get the frame rate up a bit. Um, now what's really cool is you can see I've gone to my user library and I'm able to just to drag in these fantastic... Um, elements here, these sort of wind turbines and the rotator is part of that. So they just basically start spinning. The reason I actually adjusted the frame rate is because it does slow down the computer a little bit. Um, so you can see I'm just dragging in a landscape now at this stage just so I can kind of make the scene a bit more interesting. Let's turn off that starting ground. And one thing that I will need to do is probably just kind of like paint up the landscape just to get a little bit of kind of uh, difference on the terrain here. So I'm going to click on the paint terrain tool maybe go to my gravel and let's increase that brush size a bit. Just kind of spray in a bit of a kind of road that might link up these wind turbines. You normally see that on these sort of installations, um, like a little kind of paved road where the access would come. Um, and the other thing that I'm going to do is actually kind of move them back to the ground. Now, because I added in the um, kind of ground that was a little bit sort of up and down slopey wise, I just need to kind of reset them onto the ground. That's easy enough. Just grab onto the widget and actually they'll snap to the ground automatically. I can see a few other issues. Um, some of the wind turbines are now facing the wrong way. But that's easy enough to sort out. We can simply rotate them back. So I'm just going to kind of increase a bit of paint on this landscape here. And the scene is looking actually pretty good. Um, so apart from some of those wind turbines facing the wrong way at the moment, um, we just need to kind of correct that in terms of rotating them around. So what do you think? Really effective way to make a scene come to life. Let's save this scene um, so that we can kind of make sure we've got this for later on. And I'm going to go through and sort of just swap out the weather, just make it a little bit more kind of cloudy, potentially uh, increase a little bit of the rain effect there, just something a little bit more kind of cloudy and windy. And you can see that's looking pretty good. 
So let's have a look what else we can do. Um, so we're going to click on these turbines and select them and then basically click the high level object and just rotate them around just so they're all the orientation the same um, as a sort of wind turbine farm would be. They're probably a bit close together for a real wind farm but you know for the sake of this project uh, you get a bit of a feel for it and I think I'm really really chuffed with what we've done in a very short space of time. So it really kind of shows the power of the rotators. Now one cool thing is if you go to the search you can actually kind of go to all the rotators themselves and that just shows the animators and you can then turn them on and off. Now this means that when you're actually working, um, your computer won't be kind of like trying to generate the animation and the rotation of those things. So it's gonna be a lot better frame rate and actually for working, you don't really need to see the turbine spinning the whole time. You just turn those back on at the end. So basically what we're gonna do now is just gonna go through and do a little bit of vegetation painting just to finish off the scene. Uh, you've seen me do this before, but I'm gonna drag down a couple of trees into the model and basically get my paint tool. Let's just drag down some spruces into the dock. Then we can select those, um, hold shift down and select all three of those, get the brush, increase the brush size potentially a little bit here just by either sliding or typing in a number. And then basically um, when we're ready, we can kind of just sort of paint on the landscape. Um, just gonna get a feel. And this kind of is helpful actually, because it gives, bit of a sense of scale for how massive these wind turbines are. You can see they're decent sized trees. Um, so they really are very big, uh, big wind turbines. Um, so there might be just a few little trees kind of sheltering, um, what should we say, visually sheltering that sort of new development there, potentially. So let's kind of just finish this off and just make the scene a little bit more interesting. So one of the nice things um, about the painted object is we've said this before but you can actually keep working on it and adjust the density of those trees afterwards and you can adjust things like the height as well.